Welcome to another Atlas 25 live event, and I'm Katarina Anthony. I'm a science communicator here at the Atlas Experiment, and I'm joined today by... Ludovico Pontecorvo. Yeah. I'm uh, the technical coordinator in Atlas, and I've been uh, working in Atlas since uh, all my life. <laughs> <laughs> really, <laughs> I started the uh, early 90s, and I'm continuing like this. So uh, really from the beginning? Even before the beginning, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was at the beginning there was uh, some pro collaboration, mm -hmm. and there were two collaboration. One was called Ego, and the other one called Ascot. And uh, at some point they joined, and I was one of the pre collaboration collaborators. <laughs> were you with another experiment before? I was. Uh, I I I made my thesis in uh, UA one here at CERN. Mm -hmm. And after this, in '89, I started working in the, the uh, let's say, in the preparation of the LHC experiments. Uh, starting really in 1990, 1991, mm -hmm. and uh, at the time it was interesting because there was no way that this experiment could have been built. Mm. So everyone was saying, okay, we cannot do this, we cannot do this, we cannot do this. So even the, the immune system, which is the easiest part of, mm -hmm. between quotes, of the, of the experiment, was not uh, easily done. It was not feasible. It was not feasible, yes. And so little by little we started to study new detectors and new technologies and so on and so forth. And at some point we understood that it, it was feasible, very hard, but very <laughs> but <laughs> feasible. <laughs> but feasible. So I think that's one thing that a lot of people don't know about Atlas is that it's actually kind of a, a jigsaw of lots of different types Absolutely. of detector. Yeah. So, um, and some of those different detectors, I mean, all of those different detectors have their own um, design report and their own designers and their yeah. own teams that are dedicated to them. Absolutely. The, the, we have, uh, let's say, three big items in, in, in Atlas. So one is the inner detector, which is in se itself is done by three different technologies, so the three different people, three different group of people that that work on a single part of these three. Then there are the calorimeters, again, done in two different uh, flavors, and then the immune system. And for example, the immune system, which is the largest one, has four types of technologies, and so there are four a group of people that are focused on different technologies that then has to come together for the immune system. Mm -hmm. Then the immune system has to come together with the uh, calorimeters and the calorimeter has to come together with the ID. And this, all this is not really trivial mm -hmm. uh, for many reasons, both uh, in, uh, let's say the engineering part, so the technical part, but, but I would say that the most difficult part is the sociological part. Wow. When you put all these people together and everyone has to show that he is the best. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, that's also something I, I think people don't know is that do you have different, because you have different groups focused on one particular detector mm -hmm. element, a lot of them are not in the same area. They can have some. Ah, yes, of course. I mean, uh, Atlas uh, is, uh, uh, if you look at the uh, world map, and you look at the uh, institution that are in, in the Atlas collaboration, you have almost all the world. Uh, there is just fewer uh, institutions in, in Africa. Mm -hmm. In Africa, we have only South Africa and Mar Morocco, mm -hmm. uh, but all the other uh, in, uh, countries, uh, I mean, Asia, uh, Euro Europe, uh, uh, um, South America, and the uh, USA, and also Canada, mm -hmm. so are all there. Mm -hmm. So it actually, it's a worldwide collaboration. Yeah, absolutely. And this detector, the detector that's under our feet now, yeah. was built in all of those worlds. Yes, uh, all the all the pieces uh, were coming from uh, really every everywhere in the world, mm -hmm. and uh, they have to be put together here mm -hmm. in uh, in different areas at CERN. Mm -hmm. uh, in small pieces actually were not so, some some of these detectors are not really small but compared to what is atlas itself is they were small pieces and then these pieces were brought down in the cavern at 100 meter down in underground and then put together there and uh, this was uh, really another 
big uh, big effort and big uh, achievement because it's really as Marzio who is uh, the architect of all this uh, Marzio Nessi uh, was always saying it's like putting uh, a bottle in uh, a, a, a ship in a bottle and it is really like this because each of these pieces is uh, really big mm -hmm. compared to what we uh, what we know now or know normally of a uh, detector mm -hmm. so for example the the coils of the toroid are 18 meters long uh, and you have to bring them down in this shaft uh, and the shaft is not 18 meter uh, wide i mean the radius the diameter of the shaft is is less mm -hmm. so we had to incline to this incline the and then bring it, the yeah and then and cool. then bring it down and this was uh, really the first one, I was there when, uh, when Marcia and the others brought the first uh, toroid coil down and it was really impressive. Mm -hmm. And then in, we started to build all this uh, big toroid and then uh, my, my role at the time was to put the chambers inside, so the detectors inside this, uh, this area. Mm -hmm. So we put the coils and then the detector inside and then and another coil and, and we saw these things uh, coming up to slowly. Yeah, re slowly coming up uh, slowly means uh, one year one year and a half <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. I mean it's quick considering what you're building yeah but, uh, the the full the full uh, construction from uh, let's say the beginning to to the end uh, in the cavern was uh, about uh, four to five years mm -hmm. Uh, and then we started to take data. So the, the, the real beginning of, 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 of Atlas as an experiment is in 2008 and then there was a, a stop and then in 2009 we saw the first collisions and this was another big, big moment big when, moment. when, yeah, when we saw the because, first Because, I mean, especially for you, mm -hmm. not that everybody who's on Atlas has an appreciation for the machine, but someone, mm. as someone who's been with the collaboration a long yeah. time, it must have been really a landmark. Oh, yes. Thing. The, the, when, uh, when in uh, September 8, 2008, we saw the first uh, beam splash, actually it was, it was not the first collision, it was really the, beam, the first beam, beam splash, this, uh, this room was completely full of people and this was uh, really one of the most exciting moments in my life, <laughs> really. <laughs> because you know, uh, we've been working for 20 years on these things and we saw for the first time the thing coming alive. It's, it's roughly the same thing as when you have a child. Yeah. Well, he, he has kids, so he can say yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, but I mean, it's not just a question of, if we're going to go with the child metaphor, of having the child, yeah. you also have to raise it. Oh it's yes, kind of yeah. But this was now. just the first yeah. time you see it. Then, <laughs> then you have to to, to make it grow. Yeah. <laughs> making it grow means uh, making taking data out of it, uh, analyzing this data, taking and then producing phys physics paper and discoveries like the X, mm -hmm. which was another big uh, excitement. <laughs> and uh, and then uh, you have to take care when uh, when uh, there are the, the let's say the, the period of maintenance. Uh, you have to take care to solve problems that by by nature uh, happens in the in, in this. Uh, big uh, experiments mm -hmm. so uh, what you have to do is uh, to plan for intervention during the early shutdown so every year we have two three months of shutdown where we uh, we do all the maintenance on these detectors that are extremely delicate I mean uh, so it's it's normal but it's quite hard because there is a lot of people that is devoted to this and you have to organize the the the, the, the work uh, the intervention and so on and so forth so it's, it's really well, I also imagine an, uh, an engineer's job is never done I imagine you have a lot of people who want to go in and make a little uh, fine-tuning and scheduling uh, them alone. Uh, oh yes, <laughs> yes. Th th this is uh, this is difficult because uh, physicists are not the most uh, diligent people <laughs> in terms of uh, uh, following rules and mm -hmm. so on and so forth. And I'm the first. <laughs> Um, so let's talk about what you guys do in the control. So obviously, you know, we don't know about the construction. Yeah. Uh, maybe they monitor it. Um, the, the monitor what physics results we put out. But there's also monitoring the detector itself. As yes. Uh, all these people, at, really, in this moment, uh, are looking at the data that are being taken. Mm -hmm. Now we are uh, taking data with a, with a rather good feel. 
and uh, these people are uh, checking each part of the detector. Mm -hmm. So each of these desks uh, is uh, uh, devoted to one of these big parts, so the inner detector, the calorimeters, uh, uh, trigger, the, 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 the muons, mm -hmm. and then the central one is for safety and for data quality, as, as you were saying. So we are looking both at the hardware status, so if there is uh, any, any part which is not behaving properly, but also as the, at the quality of the data online while, while we are taking them. Also because uh, it's r then we can try to, for example, to stop uh, the run and, and, and fix something because otherwise the data cannot be used. If it's not per very good or close to perfect, mm -hmm. we cannot use it in the, in the analysis. So uh, this is really a key uh, moment of the life of an experiment. The data taking, the operation of the detector is really important. And there is a lot of really nice and devoted people that are uh, really doing an excellent job Very here. Good. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, I think that we're we're kind of running out of time. Um, yeah. Thank you so much for taking thank us you. Into, mm -hmm. the, into your homeland. And uh, we'll actually be back at the Atlas Control Room later today for a live Q and A session. So please send in your questions if you have any. Um, we're taking questions about everything from physics, collaboration, history of the Atlas experiment, so send those in through social media. And uh, thanks again, Ludo. Thank you, and bye-bye. Mm-hmm.